Now, the manufacture of this is already underway. Uh, we're talking about 50 million doses by the end of 2020. And I note that John Bell Regis, Professor of Medicine at Oxford University, he's involved with their own uh, vaccine. Uh, he talked about the amazing level of e efficacy and he said to the BBC, I'm the first guy to say it, but I will say it with some confidence that we could be, you know, returning to normality by spring. Is that a bit yeah, well, overblown? No, I mean, what's happening now, the fact that this vaccine has worked for bodes very well at the other vaccines, you see. So we're probably going to get a situation where before Christmas, two more announcements we're hoping for. The AstraZeneca vaccine, that's the one John Bell will be involved in, and also the Moderna vaccine. They will report in the coming weeks as well. And the fact that the Pfizer one has worked so well, there's a reasonable chance these next two will work similarly, you know? And that means before Christmas, Pat, there are three highly efficacious vaccines, provided, as I say, with all the, the caveats as usual. Now, that means supply won't be an issue because they can all roll out billions of doses as we go into 2021, you see. And then secondly, as we discussed, Pfizer had already mobilised an army to prepare 1.4 billion doses of this vaccine, you see. So, so in other words, they're ramping up production massively. And the CEO was on record as well about two weeks ago saying, there's no point in making a vaccine unless you can roll it out quickly, you see. So they're very well aware yeah. of the need to get it to people as quickly as possible. So it's not unreasonable to assume by the middle of next year, you'd have to say probably in you know, a widespread rollout, you know. OK, now you're, you're obviously being cautious until you see the data and, you know, yeah, it's wise to be cautious because I see that uh, Brazil's health regulator has suspended the clinical trial in Brazil for China's Sinovac coronavirus because of a severe adverse effect um, yeah. event. One event, but severe. So, you know, they have to, that, that'll be stop start until they're sure that it was nothing to do with the vaccine. Yeah, that was a concern, fact, because they, they reported 9,000 people that had, had had that vaccine and it didn't have any adverse events at all with the 9,000. So the question is now, do they see an adverse event? Now, now with Pfizer, they will get the full safety analysis in about two weeks. And that's our next key moment. Now, now they must have looked at this to some extent. They didn't stop the trial at any point, obviously. They've got the 38,000 people have had have been on that trial, which is incredible. They're waiting to get to 42,000. So that's the actual limit they're looking for. And then they look at all the safety you see. So we'll have that as well in the next couple of weeks and we'll keep our fingers crossed. So, mm. so if it's safe at that situation, and then we see the data properly laid out, you know, in a proper scientific report, that'll take another three or four weeks, I guess. Then we'll know that they've made it really. Now, how much vaccine will we have access to from Pfizer or from any of the others under the EU uh, joint purchasing programme? Yeah, the talk is they, they wrote it out on a pro rata basis per country. So the EU has bought, I think, 200 million doses of this one already. And then it goes to the healthcare workers because they're on the front line. Obviously, they're the ones at risk of getting infected. And then secondly, the vulnerable, that means older people. You could see a situation where every nursing home now will have the vaccine available to it, maybe before Christmas. I mean, that seems a bit ambitious, probably. Mm -hmm. But certainly early next year, we'll see the older population being vaccinated and then the vulnerable groups you know the ones with other diseases i guess and effectively what you're doing is you're giving a medical shield now to the vulnerable that, that's why this is so good in a sense because the shielding we thought was locking people up remember that was a debate shield yeah. them all by locking but this vaccine will shield people and if you have 90 percent efficacy can you imagine that that means 90 percent of people taking the vaccine at a very low risk of getting infected so that's why that number is, is in the headline really.